Welcome to MathsMaster.org. This video is Introduction to Graph Transformations. So what are graph transformations? You may have heard of them before. Let's find out what they're all about. OK, so hopefully you'll have plotted some graphs before. Uh, this one is quite a uh, straightforward graph to plot, y equals x. And you'll have uh, got familiar with the method of how you plot the graphs. But graph transformations are all to do about graphs that are related to each other. So they're similar to each other in some, in some kind of way. So if we take the original graph that you can see here, y is equal to x, what we could do to that graph would be that we could plot the graph of y equals x plus 5. There must be some kind of relationship between those two graphs. We take the original graph and we add 5 to it. Uh, there must be some kind of relationship uh, between those graphs. Similarly, sir, if we start with the original graph y equals x, there must be similarities between that graph and the graph of y equals x minus 8. Similarly, so, if we start with the graph y equals x, the graph of y equals 4x must have certain similarities and certain differences with that original graph. And finally, here's another one. The graph of y equals a third x must have something in similar with the graph of y equals x. Um, and it must have some differences as well. So graph transformations are all about uh, taking a, an original uh, graph that you've got here, y equals x, or similar, and then doing something to that. Maybe we multiply the x by a number, maybe we add or subtract a number to the x, and so on. But what this topic is about, graph transformations, is looking at what happens to that original graph when we do that change. What are the similarities and differences between those graphs? Okay. If we're going to talk about graph transformations, we need to do so using the language of functions. Now, you may or may not have come across this before, so what I'll do is I'll give you a brief introduction uh, about what functions are all about. I'll give you enough information about them so that we can talk about uh, graph transformations using functions. Okay, so what is a function? Well, a function is shown like this. You have a letter F, and then in brackets, you have some other letters. Now, in this case, we've just got an X. So we would use this language. This F, open bracket, X, close bracket, means, or we would say, this is a function in terms of X. A function of X. A function in terms of X. Now, what that just means is that we can have any algebraic expression which has just x's in it. It doesn't have any y's, it doesn't have any z's, it doesn't have any other constants, uh, which are letters. It just has x's in it. So a function of x just has x's in it. Those x's can be squared or cubed or times to the power of 10, it doesn't matter, but you mustn't have any other letters in it. Okay, so all of these functions are around in this circle are functions of x. So here's a function of x, a nice simple one, x add 2. And what I want you to do now is to think of a function as actually like it's a machine. It's got an input, then you do something to that input and get an output. Now with a function, in this case, f of x, x is going to be the input. So we put x into the machine, we then do x add 2, and we'll get an output. Right, so you'll see now here in blue, I've shown that uh, there's a number 1 in here rather than the letter of x. Okay, so we would say that this is the function of x when x is equal to 1. The 1 is in there in replace of the letter x, so x is equal to 1. That's what this language is telling us. So if x is equal to 1, we put that into the function machine as our input. So rather than thinking about x now, we think about that x is equal to 1. 
So when we apply our function x add 2, we do 1 add 2, and we get the output 3. So we would say that the function um, f of x, when x is equal to 1, is uh, equal to 3. So the function evaluated when x is equal to 1 is equal to 3. OK, but naturally you can change the value of x. That's why we use a letter rather than a number to stand for that, because it can change. So this is now the function evaluated when x is equal to 2. So the input is 2, we do 2 add 2 is 4, so the output is 4. And you can naturally evaluate the function uh, for different values of x, any values of x that you like. Okay, so what the function actually gives us is actually a relationship between, between two sets of numbers. It says, give me an input and I will tell you what the output will be. And the relationship between the input and the output is what the function is doing. It is the function itself. So in this case, we took the input, we added two to it, and that was the output. So we can give it any input and it will give us any output. And, and that's what a function tells us. Okay, so we get two sets of numbers which have a special relationship between them, and that is the function. Now, what we do with graph transformations is we say that y is equal to the function of x. So when you saw x add 2, or or well, this function of x is equal to x add 2. You may have thought that seems quite similar to what you've seen before. You've, you've probably plotted graphs of y equals x add 2, or you probably could do that. So what we now do is we just literally say the y coordinate is equal to the output of the function, if you like. It's equal to f of x. So you can see here in blue, I've uh, showed you the numbers which were the inputs to the function. They're the values of x. And then in red, I've shown you the outputs from the function. And they're going to be the y coordinates. And so to the right of those numbers, in the bottom right hand corner here, you can see that I've generated uh, three sets of coordinates, which I can then plot on a graph uh, to uh, show this function uh, plotted actually on a graph. OK, so we have briefly discussed the idea of what graph transformations are, and we've learnt the language of functions, which allows us to describe graph transformations. Let's go ahead and actually have a look at what possible graph transformations there are, because there's actually only four of them. And once you know what effect each of these four graph transformations has on a graph, you can then go on and apply it to any function of x that you would plot on a graph. So let's go ahead now and learn the four different types of graph transformation that there are. OK, let's just start with a very simple function of x, in this case x squared. What you could do to that function is literally just add a number on to the end of it. So in this case we I could uh, use the letter A to stand for that number, and you could literally just add a number onto that function. And we describe this actual graph transformation as f of x add A. Very simple, I think. So the first graph transformation says f of x add or subtract A. Obviously, if we could add a number to the graph, why couldn't we subtract a number? So the first graph transformation is f of x add or subtract a. OK, let's have a look at the second thing that we could do to our function of x, in this case x squared. Well, we could actually add a number to the x, or add a in this case, before we then went on and squared it. So the idea with this graph transformation is that if you think about the function like a machine, 
the input was x. Well, let's actually add a to x before we then go and put it and evaluate it in our function machine. So let's actually add the value of a uh, to x before we then go and do whatever the function told us to do with it. So in this case, it was square it. So you'll see that I've put the x add a in brackets before we then go on and square it. So this graph transformation, uh, we use this language to show it. f of open bracket x add a close bracket. And it's important to remember here or, uh, that the uh, brackets are used uh, to show that we are adding the a to the x before we then go and evaluate that in the function. So in this case, because the add a is inside the bracket with the x, we add that to the x before we then go and evaluate the function. So the second graph transformation is f of open bracket x add or subtract a close bracket. Naturally, if we can add a number uh, to x, we could we could subtract a number as well. So that's the second graph transformation. Right, so the third one now. Again, we'll start with our basic function of x, x squared. What we could do is we could do the x squared, but then we could times that by a number. So we'll square the x, and then we could times that by a number. Uh, we'll use a again to denote what that number is. And this graph transformation, we show using this language. So we'd say a f of x, or a times f of x. And that just literally means take the function in x that you've got, in this case x squared, and then times it by the number a. So our third graph transformation is a f of x, or a times f of x. Okay, the fourth and final thing that we could do to this function, uh, which would change its graph, uh, let's have a look at what that would be. Well, previously, in the third graph transformation, we said evaluate x squared and then times it by a. What we could do would be to times the x by a before we then go on and square it. So again, if you think about your function machine, we'd actually, the input, we would times the x by a before we then went and put it into the function machine. So, we use this language to show this graph transformation, f of open bracket a times x close bracket. The a is inside the bracket with the x to show that we are timesing the x by a before we then go and do whatever the function told us to. In this case, it said square the x. So in this case, we'd square the a times x. So the fourth grand, uh, graph transformation looks like this. f of open bracket a times x. So that's the basics to do with graph transformations. The idea that we take a function of x, y is equal to f of x, and then we can do four different things to that function. And what happens to that graph in particular when we do each of those four different things is the whole topic of graph transformations. And it's important to remember that whilst we've just looked at uh, some very simple functions here, we looked at x uh, squared, um, this actually works for all functions of x. So if you had 2x cubed minus 2x squared add 3x minus 5, the principles that you'll learn here, um, the, what actually happens to the graph when you do each of these transformations is exactly the same. You can apply it to any function of x. Okay, that was introduction to graph transformations. If you want to see some more great maths videos, please visit mathsmaster.org.